Good morning, everyone. Tractor Man 44 here. You know, I have people tell me all the time, you know, that, that my name's Tractor Man, but I never do tractor videos. Well, I do get a few every now and then. Today, we're going to do something different. I'm down at my son's house. We've got my old 800 Ford down here that we fixed up a uh, saw rig for uh, last spring, I think, or last winter or something. And doggone, uh, doggone thing won't hit a lick. Been setting for five or six months. So uh, we come down, took a quick look, see at it, and uh, <laughs> found a unique situation with the points. So uh, I'll, I'll show you that here in just a second. But uh, we're going to go ahead and try to get a set of points in. Unfortunately, all I can find is Tisco points uh, located here in the uh, local farm store. And uh, they're not typically known as, as, as a, a very good, reliable set. They have a tendency to be built out of or manufactured out of a little cheaper material. And they seem to burn just a little bit quicker than normal. Uh, especially if you just go up and leave the key on or something like that, you know, because that, if the points are closed, it's continuing to generate heat across those contacts. And they have a tendency to, to fry pretty quickly. File them a time or two and they're just about done. But at any rate, uh, we're going to go ahead and take a look at that. But I'm going to show you another tractor too. Now, I tell you, that old thing don't look like much, uh, but it's a B2400. Had a buddy of mine that called me one day and he had another friend who had a BX2100 whose uh, uh, shed caught on fire and burnt down. And uh, he just gave me the old uh, the body of that 2100. Uh, well, lo and behold, the engine was actually good. It was not damaged at all. Everything else was melted just completely uh, to nothing. Oh, well, I salvaged some parts off of it. But uh, it was re quite fortunate because the engine in this little 2400 was wore plumb out. So I checked the part numbers in, uh, in the catalogs and found out that the blocks were identical. Uh, well, except, you know, the bore and all that kind of stuff, you know. But the block bolt patterns and everything was identical. So I took that BX2100 engine and dropped it right into this B2400 uh, uh, tractor. And uh, boy, I tell you what, it, it is a, a beast. We call it a Mighty Mouse simply because uh, it's just absolutely incredible. It's got that bush hog loader on the front. And that bush hog loader has so much power, it's just unbelievable. I can run around with a, with a log big enough on the front forks to where the, I'm just running on the front axle and the back wheels are 16, 18 inches in the air. It's just a good little, little tractor. And this has been uh, sent down to my son's house. Actually, I think he stole it from me. So I don't know if it's gonna Those come you're home. you're not familiar with the point setup, well, pay no attention. First off, uh, all you tractor enthusiasts of my resistor there, that's obviously bypassed. Uh, there's a reason for that, but we won't go into that right now. But your points, underneath your distributor cap, of course. <clears throat> and we've already made sure that oxidation and stuff is actually removed off of the, uh, the terminals in the distributor cap. But whenever we pull the rotor, Pull the rotor, and then we have to pull this Bakelite cap off of here. It's kind of a dust shield, I guess, for lack of a better term. Moisture slash dust shield. Uh, it's broken. It's cracked. I need to get a replacement, but that's a Ford item. I just haven't gotten to it yet. Uh, but anyway, whenever we get into here and take a look at the points, you can look right here. Whenever I looked at it yesterday, I found laying right here, right here at the end of the screwdriver, one of the contact points. So we're going to go ahead and change those points. All right, so we get out our handy dandy uh, ignition wrenches. These, uh, these are quite old. They're, I've had them for 30 some years. I keep them in a nice uh, waterproof container in a drawer in my toolbox with some desiccant packages in them so that they don't draw any moisture. But you select the right one and you pull off your, uh, your little nut back here on the back. Kind of holds the condenser in place. So what we want to do is we want to bounce that to where we can get the, uh, the rubbing portion of the points on top of one of the lobes. There we go. It stopped on the uh, the little push block on the point stopped with the push block on top of the cam lobe. And so our points are open. You can see we actually have spark up there. That's a good thing. That means all the rest of the stuff is functioning. We take out the mounting, the mounting screws that actually hold the points in place. I sent my son after a holding screwdriver. There's our contact. There's the one that's still on there and there's the one that's actually missing. Lobe or the push block, I guess you want to call it. The push block that actually opens and closes the points every time it passes one of those four lobes. We're going to go ahead and set that in position right here. Now we're still directly on top of the lobe, but our cam, our uh, points are not open. So I know you cannot see this here, but there's a slot right here. You stick your screwdriver in and you'll rotate this until you get the, the determined point setting. And that particular point setting is 25 thousandths of one inch. So we've got to find our 025. Oh, here's 25. I gotta have my son verify that this says 025. Tyler, read this right here. Read. Is that 025 or 026? So now that we got our uh, the correct feeler gauge, uh, we've got it at 02, uh, 025. What I have to do is I have to stick my screwdriver in this slot, 
we'll snug this back screw down just a little bit and then this front one will be a little bit loose and we pivot it forward with our screwdriver in that slot. There we go. But we'll twist that screwdriver and open with those contact points where we have 0.025. And you want a, a, a bit of a pull, but you don't want it to be where you have to jerk it out of there and you don't want it to be real loose. If you have to jerk it out of there, it's going to be on the narrow side of 025 if you have to... I see that's actually a little bit too snug. So I got to pull this here. It's always a higher degree of difficulty doing this with trying to film the doggone thing because you have to pay attention to where your arms are and all that stuff, you know, but it don't matter. See, that's a little bit loose. So I have to tighten it back up. There's a degree of snugness that I like right there. We pulled the condenser out, so now we're going to set the new condenser in place. Uh, the old condenser, uh, we actually checked that and it checked okay because a condenser is nothing more than a capacitor. A capacitor builds a charge and then discharges it. Well, we finally got the condenser in. I think the condenser is slightly different in diameter, and I just could not get it to, uh, to function. Uh, one thing that's really, really important, you got to make sure you don't ground any of these electrical wires or the ends of the electrical wires on the either the points, points plate, or on the condenser itself. If you ground or touch either one of them to ground, you'll, uh, you'll ground out the uh, generation of the spark, and it ain't going to run. Get her started. This particular one here is 5 sixteenths or 8 millimeter. I'd have to have my son put these in. He's less ham-fisted than I am. Feels like it's on securely. Have to make sure that we have nothing coming in contact with anything other than this wire, this wire, and the post right here on the on the points. And we verified that the two points mounting bolts are tied, tightened down tight. We've got 25 thousandths gap. We're on the, uh, the lobe and new condenser. So everything should be ready to go. Now we, we, we hope this is the only problem with the thing. I will know in a few minutes, I hope. I do need to get a new one of these. This guy here is not doing too good. That's popped into there. And look at there, they give us a 25,000 fuel yep. gauge. You can put that in your toolbox, man. I should have put just a touch of grease on those cam lobes. I should pop that off there and put that in there, but we'll do that later. Hey, I didn't even see you do that. Should be able to set this right back on there. This particular uh, distributor drive has got a little detent, uh, ball bearing detent. You're supposed to drop a few drops of oil down in there occasionally. That keeps everything lubricated down there. And like I said, a little bit of a dielectric grease on the uh, cam lobes have been great. At any rate, here's our defective points. Here's an old rotor, but we'll save that because, you know, sometimes you get a cracked rotor. It's better to have something instead of nothing, you know what I mean? Just a little bit, you know. New rule. Here we go, it dripping instantly. Like fingers. Yep. Now, the whole point of this exercise is to get this thing run as we get back in his uh, foot pile and get his bowl with cut up and get into the base. So, uh, I think, it's, uh, I think the operation was a success. He's got a couple of 2 by 4s go ahead and whack up. 2 by 2s 2 by 4s Go ahead. Definitely an earplugs kind of thing. Now we're just running it at an idle. You hear it kind of slow down. You can actually hear it slow down. We just got the tractor at an idle, nowhere near running 540 RPM on the fire takeoff shaft. But uh, I think everything's going to work fine. He took and put a new uh, a new board across there. Uh, that's really pretty cool. I should have done that a long time ago, but I never did. I figured uh, all that had been on there, you know, for probably 60, 70 years or so. You know, another 10 years probably be all right. Now, to refresh your memory from last year when I did this project, this is an old uh, Dearborn, and it's made for a, a, a specific type of little A-frame that goes on the back of the four tractors that actually hooks down to the actual right angle drive. I didn't know that until one of my viewers uh, turned me on to that idea. The reason this one here doesn't work like that is because that's actually a MHF. That's a Massey Harris Ferguson right angle drive off of the small uh, 50 series and 40 series Fergusons and 35 series Fergusons, all those little uh, Massey Fergusons. But at any rate, that's all I had, so I didn't realize that that was what you were supposed to do. So I just converted it to a standard three-point category one uh, setup, 
and then uh, it works fine with any of these tractors that uh, that right angle drive will bolt onto. So it's doing a really a, a pretty fair job. And uh, tickle to death with it. He's going to be able to get in the woodpile now. Okay, so there you have it. Another uh, reasonably successful Tractor Man 44 video. Uh, we succeeded in doing what it was we set out to do. Took a little bit of time because it's a little awkward working in there. I'm just glad it's not a front mount distributor like on some of the, uh, the late 40s, uh, nine, uh, 8 in Fords and 9 in Fords and stuff like that. Uh, that's much more difficult. Um, but at any rate, you know, we, we got her running. It fires right up. It's going to do a fine job until these points burn up. So, uh, like I've been saying, man, I think we beat this one to death, so this track man 44, and I am out of here.